Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. In the last part, we took out the eighth of the main eight bosses, and now we're more or less just going about grabbing the last few items that we need to do before we can actively go to the final boss arena and such. Oh hey, here's that very room I was talking about a part or two ago when it came to, uh, memorable areas. Thankfully... Even if you haven't followed this as a guide, by the time you get this late in the game, there's probably only maybe one or two rooms per area you haven't found, and it's usually the ones that are, you know, hidden well, because uh, due to how this game is structured, I will say it's easy to explore most of the rooms just trying to figure out your way around the area, whether or not that's exactly a good thing for the structure of the game, even compared to what the genre it's meant to be, I do not know. Still, that is Cabbage Cavern completed, and I believe at this point we are nearly done with every area, if not done with every area, because let's see, Mustard Mountain's done. Carrot Castle, we already know for a fact, is done. As is, I believe, all of Ocean. But what about Peppermint Palace? That's looking like it's completed. This is not your last opportunity to go out of your way to get things like this. Like I mentioned last part, once you beat the game, you're able to go through the entire area with even a power that you don't get through the main power room. So if you want to save getting the last items for after the final boss, you can completely do that. I have just played this game the way I have in order to best do a flow, so to speak. Make sure it all just goes together well enough. Again, though, this route is from an old Swordsman Kirby speedrun, because I didn't want to do three practice runs trying to remember this game's level design. Before we head off to the final boss, let's take a look at something. We're only at 97% because the final boss counts for 3%, but now we have sub-games on the main menu. First off, we got su Speed Eaters. Each minigame has three difficulties. This is your general reaction game. You wait for the thing to lift up, you press the A button, whoever gets the most in... gets the most in. First to fill their bar at the top wins. These are distractions at best, even with four people. Though admittedly, from what I've seen, the chaos of <laughs> having to do reaction games with friends is always a little bit funny. These just feel like they're here though to fill, not, not fill cartridge space per se, but at least give you more to do than just the main game. Crackety Hack's probably my favorite of the one, all of them, and this is one that's technically based off a mini game from Superstar. You gotta fill a couple of bars as high up as you can, then line up some cursors and try to break the planet in half. The AI is remarkably bad at this on the bottom two difficulties. Third one, it's kind of okay at. I have maxed this out a couple of times. I didn't here though, because uh, you can just outright crack the planet in half, in which case I don't even want to think about the implications of the environments that Kirby would do there, but uh, it's Kirby, so who gives a shit? Kirby Wave Ride on initial inspection seems like it would be like a relatively similar one that has, I think, even the exact same music track and starting thing in Nightmare in Dreamland, where you have to grind on waves. No, your goal here is to get as many speed boosts as you can by jumping off each wave at the very crest of it. The timing on this is a little bit precise, and this is one of those where the higher difficulty you go, uh, the more precise the AI gets, but it's... It's a, it's a tiny little minigame. It's meant to be here, maybe for you to mess around with some friends, otherwise, no reason to really go for it. I'm only showing these off so I can say this is technically a full LP. Quote, unquote. These do nothing. More important in that regard, though, is at this point, we have every key item in the game. So, if we highlight the file and go to the collection room, we can see everything we've collected. All the spray paints for the various Kirby colors, again, my favorite is the carbon one on the bottom right, I believe it is, which turns you into Shadow Kirby. Every single musical sheet in the game, every single map, all of the life ups, and the music player. Oh no, chalk is what it's called. I guess carbon's the one with the, uh, the, the orange shoes, isn't it? Again, these are mostly just bragging rights, 100% this game doesn't actively unlock anything. I don't think there's a hard mode or anything like that. There's definitely not a Meta Knight mode. But still, having things like a music player in a game like this is nice. Uh, this was around the era where we started to get these much more consistently in games. As prior to maybe the Game Boy Advance and DS, it was rare to find one that had one built in the same way. 
So with that, let's now head back to the main footage and actually grab the Smash Power Up and go after the final bosses. Let's see what awaits us behind the amazing mirror, shall we? What's that? The Meta Knight that we were fighting the entire game wasn't the real Meta Knight, but they revealed that as early as the first cutscene once you're outside the tutorial? You don't say! Dark Meta Knight is a little more aggressive. I don't think he has any new attacks that the normal Meta Knight fight had back in the end of Radish Ruins. It's pretty straightforward. Unless you lose your ability, in which case you have to wait for him to actually do moves that generate stars, but thankfully the down thrust happens relatively often. Welcome to the first of many phases to the final boss. This is Dark Mind. Dark Mind's gonna teleport all around the room with his mirrors orbiting him. The mirrors can either be active attacks themselves or shield him from your attacks. Otherwise, his main attacks are to throw stars at you, which you can inhale and shoot back at him. Some of them can also be used to get abilities, like the green one in particular, I think, activates a roulette. And for this entire section, we have a new uh, ability. This is the Master Sword. It can do a lot of things that the sword, normal sword, can't, like better shockwaves, things such as mid-air dashes. You get it at the start of every single fight here, too, so you're always going to have it. It's powerful, and after you beat the game, you get to go through the main areas with it because it lands near the main hub, uh, the center of the main hub, even. But uh, it's, 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 it's all right. It is probably the better thing to use against Dark Mind's various phases than actively waiting for him to shoot out stars and shooting them back at him, but it it's almost kind of underwhelming in a way. But at the same time, it's like you get to use Meta Knight's sword. There's always going to be something cool about that. The further in we're going to get to this, though, the way this boss fight works becomes very apparent. You do a fight where he gains a new attack or, become, or becomes more erratic with his teleportation, and then you do a little bit of a level section. Uh, as for new attacks, he gains the further in you get. I think he'll swing his mirrors around more widely. Uh, if you attack him while his core isn't exposed, I believe he'll teleport away with a different animation just to be like, nope. Uh, he'll eventually start dropping this checkerboarded orb in the middle of the screen, which acts as a bomb that has its own HP bar. You can either attack to destroy it, or I think you can do a super inhale to bring it into you and then shoot it out. Alright, uh, I misspoke earlier also. The stars that he shoots out, they all have powers. Uh, the red star will give you the fire ability. The blue will give you ice. The purple one will give you spark. The green is, uh, a random ability, though. Which means it could give you something really good, like smash. But it could also probably give you sleep, and sleep is never good in Kirby, ironically. Whenever he's attacking, he's always going to be vulnerable, though, so if you keep up the offensive, he'll go down pretty quickly. With that said, this fight is uh, a little long. <laughs> I don't think it's the longest final boss in Kirby, unless you count these individual rooms as phases. That is really the way I die, isn't it? Uh, I want to say... Uh, was Drossia about as long in Canvas? That was a long fight from memory. Nightmare's not too long. Marks isn't too long. Uh, hmm, maybe if you count True Arena stuff, some of the other ones from the later games could be longer. I... Uh, I cannot but wonder why they put the level design sections between it. Maybe they figured they wanted to have final moments of co-op outside of the actual boss fight so you could explore around and be like, all right, if I hit this, we can get you all to the boss fight first. Or something like that. Again, I don't know. That said, great music. There's the bomb. Uh, by the way, I believe you inhale the bomb and try to swallow it. You do get an ability. I want to say you get Crash, which explains why it's a screen nuke. As a kid, I used to love fighting this guy, but as I've aged, 
it really does drag on. I feel they could have done the first phase, the second fight against it with the little section between it. And then I think they should have gone right on to what is the second phase, so to speak, if we're talking in terms of just visual differences. Although I should note, in the boss endurance mode, you unlock after beating the game, which is the only thing I'm not showing off. It's just a boss rush. You don't get anything for actively beating it in this game, I believe. Uh, I believe you only fight this boss once. And you only get... Uh... The version that has all the attacks. But now we're on to phase two. Which looks like it should be on top of a tower in Mordor. Hey, Shadow Kirby helped us. Dark Mind Phase 2 is a bit of a rough fight because, like the first phase, you can only hit it while the eye is open, and the eye is almost always open while it's doing attacks. It can bounce lasers onto the mirrors to try and hit you, it can do a giant death laser across the, bo the bottom of the screen, it can make its mirrors come down and spin around. It can be a little bit rough to get through this fight without getting hit a lot, though, because it moves very quickly and its attacks are all pretty fast and... Because it's a giant eyeball, there's not exactly many telegraphs to what attack it's doing because I don't think its attack pattern is set. You can destroy the mirrors to take them out of commission for a while, but be careful when you do that because when you take one out, it breaks apart into four cutters that can hurt you, so be careful. It can also still spawn enemies in case you lose your power, which, you know, that's really good. And they dropped some decent ones there because I think that was, what was that? Fight, bomb, and, uh... I miss what the third one is. Either way, some, some useful ones. If you have multi, uh, all four players here, you're not out of luck. But that's it, if you have all four players here, it's also going to have a ridiculous amount of health that you really don't want to deal with. Ice is the third one. Oh, and Beam, too. That's right, it drops more than one enemy. If we had skipped right here from the first main Dark Mind fight, I feel this boss fight would have felt a lot better to me. that genre shift we've been looking for in every single Kirby game, now we're a top-down shooter. Dark Mind will charge at you, fire stars out, and that's it. Your entire goal? Shoot him to death. Once you take out his health, that is game. It's oddly a mini-game of sorts. In fact, there's even a score tally once the credits start rolling, because the credits roll while we're in here uh, to see how many hits you can get in, but I... Don't really get why. Guess maybe bragging rights between your friends. I got 76 hits on the final might, final fight of Dark Mind. What about you? Kind of thing, but eh, it's the easiest phase. I think if you die, you start here. But I honestly don't remember because I haven't died here in a while. And that's Kirby in the Amazing Mirror. I've brought up my problems with the game throughout it. I feel for a Metroid game, it's just not structured right. The amount of free roam in it is nice for beginners in a lot of ways, but it's also really overwhelming and makes the areas feel very samey. If they had some amount of actual progression for Kirby, like gaining new permanent abilities as you progressed or something like that, I feel this game would be a lot more recommendable to fans of the genre like myself. But that said, if you're a Kirby fan, it's probably worth a shot. It's got some good original music. It's got some cool ideas in it. It's just not the best Kirby game by a long shot. I think Nightmare in Dreamland is a better Kirby game on the Game Boy Advance, and that's a remake of an NES game. It's cool. There's just better things for both Metroid fans and Kirby fans. And so, Dark Mind was defeated, and his dream of conquering the Mirror World was shattered. Now, at last, peace will return to the Mirror World. But they remain on guard. After all, who knows when another evil might arise. Don't worry, though.
Mirror World Kirby will be there to keep them all safe. And that's where you can find the Master Sword to use that ability whenever you want after you load your save file. And if you've done everything I have throughout this LP, gotten every chest, checked every room, and beaten the final boss, after you press the A button you'll get one little bit of ending, and then the 100% screen should show up. And now you get boss endurance. You get to fight all the bosses in a semi-random order. I don't think you even get anything for actually beating it. Uh, it's there. But with that, I'm gonna need to end this LP off here. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great night. Take care. And I'll see you guys in the next Let's Play. Whatever it may be. And I know exactly what it is. And who oh boy, editing that is gonna be a trial. <laughs> see you guys then.